Today is the one year anniversary. The one year anniversary of the bells. The one year anniversary of this. If you don't know, fans of Daenerys everywhere are showing their solidarity with the hashtag I stand by Daenerys. And fun fact, I stand by Daenerys. I'm sure you know that unless you're new here. I stand by Daenerys now and always. The one true queen. And let me tell you why. So the bells made absolutely no sense to me. Absolutely none. I do not think this is how it goes down in the books. She went from good queen Daenerys to mad queen in the space of an episode. And there was some commentary from the writer's release. You can watch it on the channel Dragon's Demands. But Brian Cogman says that Daenerys's arc was planned out for years and that in season eight, episode two, there was supposed to be some arc planning in that episode, like her turn to evil mad queen was supposed to start happening in this episode, which is like, what? What? Like, what part of this episode says she is going mad? Is it supposed to be because she doesn't like Jamie Lannister because he killed her father? Is it because she does not trust the Kingslayer because she doesn't know him? She doesn't know him like we do. All she knows of him is what she was told by Viserys. She knows that he killed her father and he was supposed to be sworn to protect him. So is it that? Does she ignore what Sansa and Jon want and kill Jamie anyway? No. No, she doesn't. She agrees and Grey Worm gives him his sword back. So it can't be this. It can't be this. Like, of course she's angry seeing the man that killed her father. No matter how awful her father is, it's still her father. So is it because she's upset that Tyrion let her be played? over and over again by his sister would you not be upset that your advisor keeps stumbling and falling on his face when it comes to his family or is it because Lady Sansa doesn't like her does she want to kill Sansa does she go feed her to her dragons no she extends an olive branch and she goes to her and tries to talk to her tries to find common ground with her so is it because she wants Tyrion to go safely into the crypts instead of fighting in the battle? Or is it when she visits Jon in the crypts and he tells her that he is Rhaegar Targaryen's son and his real name is Aegon Targaryen, the last living male Targaryen? So is it that? So is it because she isn't like, yes, daddy, King Aegon? Like, is that supposed to be some type of foreshadowing? How is she supposed to act? There's a quote in A Dance with Dragons and it's from Tyrion. And most people think that Tyrion is a reasonable man most of the time. He's intelligent and he has some advice for Rhaegar's other alleged long lost son Aegon about Daenerys. I know that she spent her childhood in exile, impoverished, living on dreams and schemes, running from one city to the next, always fearful, never safe, friendless but for a brother who was by all accounts half mad a brother who sold her maidenhood to the dothraki for a promise of an army i know that somewhere out upon the grass her dragons hatched and so did she i know she is proud how not what else was left to her but pride i know she is strong how not? The Dothraki despise weakness. If Daenerys had been weak, she would have perished with Viserys. I know she is fierce. Astapor, Young Kai, and Marine are proof enough of that. She has crossed the grasslands and the red waste, survived assassins and conspiracies and fell sorceries, grieved for a brother, a husband, and a son, trod the cities of the slavers to dust beneath her dainty sandaled feet. Now, how do you suppose this queen will react when you turn up with your begging bowl in hand and say, Good morrow to you, auntie. I am your nephew, Aegon, returned from the dead. I've been hiding on a pole boat all my life, but now I've washed the blue dye from my hair and I'd like a dragon, please. And oh, did I mention my claim to the Iron Throne is stronger than your own? So because Danny didn't kneel down and kiss the Jon Snow ring after all that she's been through to get to this moment, is that supposed to be like careful foreshadowing? Because I think it's a reasonable reaction. And so does Tyrion in the books. And she doesn't even have time to talk it over with him or process it before the horn blows three times and White Walkers are here. After she heard that news, did she say, you know what? Fuck this. Let's go. Did she take her dragons and gather up her armies and leave? No. 
She still put her life on the line, her armies on the line, her dragons on the line, people that she loves. She put them on the line to save Winterfell and to save it for people that don't even appreciate that she's there. So I don't understand where this actual foreshadowing is coming from. Like, what is it supposed to be? Because every challenge that happened in this episode, she responds appropriately. I find it hard to believe that this arc was planned out from the beginning because they didn't tell Amelia Clark or give her a clue as to what her character Daenerys Targaryen was leading up to. How can it be foreshadowing if the character doesn't even know the role they're supposed to be playing and the vibe they're supposed to be conveying. When Amelia read the script, um, she was kind of like fucked up about it. So the reason a lot of people have trouble with this is because it is so out of character for Daenerys Targaryen. Not only in the books, but in the show as well. Burning an entire city full of men, women, and children after the surrender doesn't make sense for even the most cartoonishly evil villain like the Night King. The Night King is inherently evil, cartoonishly evil. He breaks down the wall and Eastwatch with Viserion. His mission is accomplished. He rolls out south. He doesn't then go burning castle to castle down the wall for the fun of it for shits and giggles. But you want us to believe that Daenerys Targaryen burned King's Landing after she had beat the big boss to unlock some kind of evil villain achievement because of oh because she went mad it doesn't make sense could Daenerys burn King's Landing in the books it's very possible will it go down completely different absolutely the context of things matters and the bells made no sense so what I did was I went back and made note of everything that could be considered morally gray that Daenerys has done over eight seasons of the show and I also went back into the books to find the morally gray things and we're gonna talk about all of it and hopefully by the end of this you will understand why I stand by Daenerys and why Tyrion's speech to Jon and us the audience was to explain this carefully planned foreshadowing and you'll ex understand why Tyrion's speech was bullshit. If Tyrion needs to give a speech to explain to the audience why this person is a mad queen it's, it's because there was no carefully planned foreshadowing. There was none. Or else Tyrion would need to give this speech. One of the things everyone loves to point to is that Daenerys didn't care when Viserys died. First of all, Viserys was her abuser. He sold her to the highest bidder like she was a fucking horse. He was a psycho. Yes, he was her brother, but she lived in constant fear of him. He hit her, kicked her, punched her pinched and twisted her nipples. If Illyrio didn't put a guard outside of her room, he was going to rape her before she married Khal Drogo. I'm sorry that she's not sorry that he got killed. In the books, the scene is much different. When he comes in, she tries to save his life. The blade, you must not, she begged him. Please, Viserys, it is forbidden. Put down the sword and come share my cushions. There's drink food. Is it the dragon eggs you want? You can have them. Only throw away the sword. He threatened to cut her baby from her womb, drew a blade in the Dothraki sacred city, but somehow she didn't care enough for her abuser. Miss me with that shit. Miss me. Like that is crazy. And she does mourn him. She does mourn him. She talks about being torn up after it. So please miss me with that shit. Sorry she didn't fucking tear her clothes off because her abuser died. Now, one of the morally great things is Daenerys burns Mary Mazdor. So I did an entire video on Mary Mazdor with Aziz and like how Mary Mazdor is misunderstood, but I don't think Daenerys killing Mary Mazdor is really all that gray. Daenerys is naive. Mary Mazdor knows that so while Daenerys believes that taking Miri under her care as she is saving Miri, the damage is already done. So when Daenerys decides she's going to kill Miri Mazdor, all Daenerys sees is this woman that has helped her husband into the grave and then finessed her into some blood magic ritual that ended up with her child being a blood sacrifice. Little Rago dead. So Miri Mazdor definitely thinks Daenerys is mad. What sane person does blood magic, walks into 
into fires and all that. But what Miri doesn't know is that Daenerys was given the damn recipe in her dreams the night before. She knows exactly what she is doing. There are much bigger forces at play and this night is a miracle it is a religious ceremony blood magic miracle so really not that gray is it people also like to point out this scene and destroy those who have wronged me we will lay waste to armies and burn cities to the ground there is not one instance in these books where Daenerys threatens to burn a city to the ground. This whole situation is fake news. It never happens. The people of Karth welcome the Mother of Dragons with open arms. They do not threaten to leave her and her people in the Red Waste to die. It just doesn't happen. And if it did happen, what she said is an appropriate response to pompous men calling you to a city and then threatening to leave her and her people in the desert to die. The people she has vowed to protect. I just want to say like season two in general was unfaithful to Daenerys A Clash of Kings. It was very unfaithful. In the books, Daenerys's thoughts are actually the opposite of burning cities. This is the first night she's in Karth. If her son and stars had lived, he would have led his Kalasar across the poison water and swept away her enemies. But his strength had left the world. Her blood riders remained, sworn to her for life and skilled in slaughter, but only in ways of the horse lords. The Dothraki sacked cities and plundered kingdoms. They did not rule them. Danny had no wish to reduce King's Landing to a blackened ruin full of unquiet ghosts. She had supped enough on tears. I want to make my kingdom beautiful, to fill it with fat men and pretty maids and laughing children. I want my people to smile when they see me ride by, the way Viserys said they smiled for my father. But first, I must conquer. The entire Daenerys Karth storyline is botched. So from Quaith to Zaro and Doria to the House of Undying to dragons being stolen, Daenerys threatening to burn people constantly. None of this stuff happens in the books ever. It doesn't happen. But let's let's just keep moving along to the other morally gray moments. So the big one, the one everyone uses to justify how evil Daenerys is, is Daenerys burning the slavers in Astapor. I'm not going to spend much time on this one. They were slavers. They enslaved other human beings for profit. They're, they're mur they murdered children and puppies. No one misses them. They gave up their right to life when they enslaved other human beings. No one misses them. She liberated thousands of slaves when she burned the slave masters. And we don't care that she did it. And she should be loved for it. Worshipped. Queen. So maybe... It's Young Kai. Maybe Young Kai is your beef with Daenerys Stormborn. But in Young Kai, all the slave masters had to do was free the slaves. And they didn't. She knew they wouldn't. Slavers aren't going to freely give up their slaves. So she took Young Kai as well and freed the slaves. Maybe it's Marine. Maybe that's your beef. On Daenerys' way to Marine, on each mile marker, the Miranese have nailed 163 children up crucified them and maybe to me the worst thing Daenerys did was crucify 163 slave masters for the children because some of those slave masters were actually against the cruelty of Marine and they were like fighting against it and stuff but she crucified 163 slave masters but she doesn't enjoy it she doesn't enjoy it it bothers her after she did it she had them nailed to wooden posts around the plaza each man pointing at the next. The anger was fierce and hot inside her when she gave the command. It made her feel like an avenging dragon. But later, when she passed the men dying on the post, when she heard their moans and smelled their bowels and blood, Danny put the glass aside, frowning. It was just. It was. I did it for the children. When people talk about madness and violence and the things that she does and comparing her to the Mad King, it's so far fetched because everything we know about Targaryen history tells us 
the opposite. Everything we know about the Mad King tells us the opposite. The Mad King loved to torture people. He loved to burn people. He loved to be cruel. He was sexually aroused by it. Like Cersei. Daenerys is not. She doesn't shy away from violence when she needs to be violent, but in no way, shape, or form does she enjoy it. And that's one of the major differences between Daenerys and the Mad King. So Daenerys bends over backwards to save Marine, to be a good queen for the people of Marine. She lays hands on the sick. She chains up her dragons. She opens the fighting pits. She marries his dar. She never feeds anyone to her dragons in the books either. It's another flight of fancy and creative change to her storyline. But now, but now let's move past the books because in the books, Daenerys is about to confront the Dothraki with Drogon. Now in season six, Daenerys burns the holy temple of the Dothraki. People are like, oh my God, look what she did. She just desecrated a holy place. And I do think something similar to this is going to happen. Um, in A Clash of Kings, the House of the Undying, she does see a vision like this, the crones bowing down to her. Now, you may think this is wrong for her to do, but they were about to take turns raping her. So she killed them. So what? In her position, almost everyone with a spine would have done the same thing. If she didn't kill them, she would have been raped and killed. So whoop de doo So maybe it's her burning the Miranese slave master ships. Uh, is that a problem? Um, nope. More slavers. No one cares. So another morally gray moment, I guess, is the loot train attack in season seven. It's war. People die at war all the time. She has dragons. Why not use them? Why should she not attack the people who just attacked her allies? She played their game when she got to uh, Dragonstone and she's been losing her allies left and right. She played with her hands tied and we've seen this before. We've seen what happens when one team plays the game one way while you play the game another. We've seen what happens when both sides aren't playing with the same standards. If you don't know who I'm talking about, see Ned Stark, see Rob Stark. So she attacked attacked with the Dothraki and Drogon. Now the aftermath of this loot train attack is another morally gray moment. The burning of Randall Tarley and Dickon Tarley. They had a choice. They made it. Now what I think is going on here is that the people writing this episode wanted us to correlate Daenerys killing Randall Tarley and Dickon to the Mad King killing Rickard and Brandon Stark. It doesn't resonate at all. Randall Tarly and Dickon are at war. They are an opposing army. They shouldn't be an opposing army because Horn Hill is sworn to the Tyrells of Highgarden. But Cersei offered Randall Tarly Highgarden to turn on Olena Tyrell, and he did. And Randall Tarly helped slaughter the Tyrell army and kill Olena Tyrell. So Daenerys should have killed him for that alone. They can bend the knee and be spared. She was even willing to send them to the wall, but they refused. So they died. Randall Tarley is a piece of shit in more ways than one. And him being executed after his betrayal and refusal to accept his position is not surprising. It's not surprising at all. Anyone would have done that. Robert, Tywin, Craig and Stark, Aegon, all of them would have done that. So people are crying about Randall Tarly and Dickon when Tywin killed Rhaegar's children and laid them at the feet of Robert Baratheon. Did anyone call him mad? Mad Tywin? Do they call Walder Frey mad for the Red Wedding. Randall Tarly is no different than Roose Bolton selling out Rob Stark. Whatever. I'm not going to get too worked up about that. This power hungry, all she cares about is the throne, unjust queen, loses a dragon to save John, goes north to save all of the racist, ungrateful northerners that hate foreigners on their land. She sacrifices herself, everything she has for the realm. Another thing people love to bring up is that she doesn't want John to tell anyone about who he is because it threatens her claim to the throne and that's all she cares about is the throne. And my God, this 
is a chore. This is a chore. She didn't want people to know because of what ultimately happened. Because when people know that there is someone else, especially someone with a dick, they will divide and conquer. Every move she makes that they don't like, they will conspire to overthrow her and or kill her and place John on the throne. It didn't matter what John wanted or how many times John said he didn't want it. This secret tore them apart anyway because Varys was plotting, Sansa was plotting, and so the wheel spins. Now, we are supposed to believe that this woman who has been through so much and overcame so much and fought for the people that no one cares about would just burn a city after the surrender bells. I'm sorry, madness, mad queen theory is whack. It doesn't stand up to what we know of Daenerys. The burning of King's Landing and all of that, if that's what it is meant to ultimately be, George will handle it with much more finesse. Will she get violent? Yes. Will she get Bernie Bernie? Yes. Will she burn King's Landing? Probably. I actually think she will burn the Red Keep, not like hundreds of thousands of innocent people. Will she purposely steamroll thousands of men, women, and children after she's won the war? No. No. I think in Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring, we will see Daenerys as we haven't seen her before, but she won't be Hitler. She won't be a nut job who has thrown all of her compassion and empathy out the window. She will be Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, fighting to win back everything that was taken from her. And that's why I stand by Daenerys Targaryen, now and always. But what do you think? As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.